the Oregon Trail. The very name evokes images of 19th century pioneers venturing bravely across the prairies and deserts of the Great Plains in the West. Deserts like ours here in southern Idaho. From the 1840s until the 1890s, these tired, often poor, and sometimes huddled masses yearning for prosperity made up one of the greatest quests in history. The Idaho Statesman has chosen the migration as one of the top 50 Idaho stories since the Statesman's founding in 1864. To learn more about the trail in the Treasure Valley, I turn to the man who is probably Boise's best known historian. My name is Arthur Hart. Uh, I'm Director Emeritus of the Idaho State Historical Society, and I've been writing for the Idaho Statesman for 44 years. It's, we usually say the Oregon Trail started in 1842, and it kept going. On the, they followed the bench where the depot is now, and until there was a little town here after 1863, when the Army had established a military post and our little old town got started. Most of the immigrants were headed toward Oregon's lush Willamette Valley to farm. And quite a few stayed through a miserable winter for them because it was already too late in the year to continue on to Oregon. So there were a lot of them living in tents and living in their covered wagons around Boise and some of them were destitute. So they're often mentioned in the statesmen uh, of these people uh, needing work. Uh, usually it was the women who took in laundry or something to uh, tide the family over until they could head out again in the spring. One of the reasons that they stopped here in the first place, uh, even if they were able to go on, is their livestock needed. For, uh, they needed to get new livestock. That, what they had was worn out. Here's where the emigrants got their first view of what we now call the Treasure Valley. This is Bonneville Point. It's southeast of Boise, three miles north of the Black's Creek exit on I-84. It's a pretty lonely place, but you can see the trees of Boise in the distance. They were the first trees the emigrants had seen in a month of hot, dry travel. The view cheered them up. In bad weather, uh, rough roads, often so dusty in summer you couldn't breathe, they all took off across country and made what are really many trails. They could call it kind of a braided trail. They rarely would have all been on the same road unless there was a place uh, coming down into a valley or something where there was only easy ascent in one spot. Starting in the 1860s, some wagons approaching Boise descended on this ramp. It's called the Kelton Ramp. It's a primitive road cut into the basalt bench near where Micron Technology now sits. It's part of the 66-acre Oregon Trail Preserve on East Lake Forest Drive off Gowan Road. Runners ascend it today. You can still see where wagons went through the reserve. You can't see the original ruts because erosion and vegetation have filled them in, but you can see gentle depressions amid the grass and sagebrush. The Oregon Trail continued up what is now Boise Avenue. You can see monuments like these there. Monuments also mark Harrison Boulevard and 15th Streets on Boise's north end, where wagons headed out of town. At the Capitol, you can see this monument installed in 1906 by a man named Ezra Meeker. He had traveled the trail decades earlier and later publicized it nationwide. It was the biggest mass migration in American history, by far. Uh, there are many different estimates, but of course nobody was taking count. But there were probably uh, 10,000 people went on the Oregon Trail. If you live anywhere in southern Idaho, you don't have to go far to learn about this remarkable story. People were still coming here on the Oregon Trail driving Model T Fords. We shouldn't forget that the migration along the same route has continued to the present. Dave Stotts, Idaho Statesman.